Star Wars has the Death Star and the US has the Dark Star, but which one is deadlier? While the creation of Star Wars Death Star is dark enough as it is designed to kill billions of life forms in a single blast, it has been revealed that the Death Star may be unreal. Yet fiction is no longer just knocking on our door of reality. It's swinging wide open with a mighty kick of the hypersonic engine exhaust of the US Dark Star. What would you think of an airplane flying over targets in Europe or Asia in as little as 90 minutes. Join us as we unveil how the Star Wars Death Star is powerless compared to the U.S. Dark Star. Unmanned aerial vehicle, UAVs, also known as drone, have been in use by the American military for decades. However, now they are on the brink of becoming fully operational in combat capability. The Air Force is leading the charge in this transformation. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and the Defense Advanced Research Project agency, DARPA, have been developing new technology to provide sustained reconnaissance information from anywhere within enemy territory, day or night, and in all types of weather. One of the revolutionary drones being developed is the Dark Star SR-72, also known as the Son of Blackbird. Developed concurrently with the non-stealthy RQ-4A Global Hawk, this advanced aircraft is poised to be the successor to the iconic SR-72. 71 Blackbird. The SR-72 represents a monumental stride in aviation technology, highlighting the U.S.'s commitment to maintaining air dominance in modern challenges such as great power conflict and asymmetrical warfare. The SR-72 stands out because of its hypersonic speed capabilities of up to Mach 6, which significantly surpasses the SR-71's maximum speed of Mach 3.3. This speed out paces any missile and eludes contemporary air defense system. Therefore, it enables the U.S. to conduct surveillance and potentially strike missions in fiercely contested areas, a key advantage in scenarios involving major global power. This technological feat is achieved through groundbreaking advancements in propulsion, particularly the turbine-based combined cycle TBCC, engine, which ingeniously blends traditional jet propulsion for takeoff with a scramjet engine for hypersonic travel. This dual engine capability represents an extraordinary feat in modern engineering, adeptly managing performance across diverse speed ranges. Also, its development aligns with the U.S. national defense strategy's emphasis on preparedness for intense conflicts, especially with adversaries like Russia and China, who are strengthening their air defenses. The SR-72's speed and stealth capabilities make it an essential asset in such situations. The development of the SR-72 marks a strategic shift in U.S. military planning. It signals a move towards more dynamic and versatile platforms capable of operating in complex battlefields of the future. This shift aligns with the Pentagon's modernization priorities, particularly in space, cyber, and autonomous technology. Compared to other hypersonic vehicles, the SR-72 is designed with a broader range of capabilities. It incorporates advanced advanced materials that enable it to withstand extreme thermal stresses, likely involving carbon-carbon composites. These are a step beyond the SR-72's titanium skin designed for heat dissipation at high speed. In addition to speed, the SR-72 also emphasizes stealth and operational versatility. It integrates advanced avionics and possibly even AI-assisted systems for autonomous operation, which were not features of early hypersonic aircraft. Lockheed Martin, a renowned aerospace and defense company, has been developing this SR-72, an acclaimed successor to the iconic SR-71 Blackbird, which was retired in 1998. As already mentioned, this hypersonic aircraft could reach incredible speeds of more than Mach 6 or six times the speed of sound. According to reports, the company has been working on the combined cycle hypersonic engine since 2013 and claimed it was ready for real-world application in 2017. Lockheed Martin aims to have a single-engine demonstrator prepared for flight by the early 2020s, with a target of 2030 for a twin-engine platform to enter operational service.
The SR-71 Blackbird was used for Cold War reconnaissance mission, and two of its aircraft were later used by NASA as test beds for high-speed and high-altitude aeronautical research. The aircraft was designed by a team of Lockheed personnel led by Clarence Kelly Johnson, vice president of Lockheed's Advanced Development Company projects, commonly known as the Skunk Works, and now a part of Lockheed Martin Corp. The development of the SR-72 is pushing the boundaries of current aerospace capability. Speculations indicate that flight testing may commence in the mid-2020s, marking a pivotal stage in the aircraft's transition from concept to operational reality. The Blackbird aircraft was developed in secrecy during the late 1950s and was first flown as the A-12 reconnaissance aircraft in April 1960. The aircraft remained classified until 1976, and President Lyndon Johnson publicly announced the existence of the YF-12A interceptor variant in February. 29, 1964, more than half a year after its maiden flight, the SR-71, an advanced version of the Blackbird, completed its first flight in December 22, 1964. Even today, more than a decade after their retirement, the Blackbird planes remain the fastest and highest flying production aircraft ever built. The Blackbirds were designed to cruise at Mach 3.2, just over three times the speed of sound or more than 2,200 miles per hour, and at altitudes up to 8,000 feet. The extreme operating environment in which they flew made them excellent platforms for conducting research and experiments in various disciplines, such as aerospace aerodynamics, propulsion, structures, thermal protection material, high speed and high temperature instrumentation, atmospheric studies and sonic boom characterization. Again, SR-71 activities at Dryden were part of NASA's High Speed Aeronautical Research Program and involved other NASA research centers, government agencies, universities, and commercial firms. The data obtained from the SR-71 research program will aid designers of future supersonic, hypersonic aircraft and propulsion system. One major experiment with the NASA SR-71 involved a laser air data sensor. The sensor used laser light instead of air pressure to generate airspeed and attitude data such as angle of attack and side slip, data generally obtained with small tubes and veins extending into the airstream or from tubes with flush openings on an aircraft's outer skin. These flights also provided information on the presence of atmospheric particles at altitudes above 80,000 feet where future hypersonic aircraft will operate. Also, NASA's dry Flight Research Center played a significant role in evaluating the aircraft and its technology, and also conducted several experiments using the Blackbird as a test bed. The center, which already had a decade of experience with the Blackbird, tested several systems and devices on the aircraft to measure the direction and speed of atmospheric particle. In addition, NASA researchers used the YF-12 and SSR-71 aircraft for various experiments to improve the performance and design of future military and civil aircraft. The experiments included studying aerodynamic and thermal loads, aerodynamic drag and skin friction, heat transfer, airframe and propulsion system interaction, inlet control system improvement, high altitude turbulence, boundary layer flow, landing gear dynamics, measurement of engine effluence for pollution studies, noise measurements, and evaluation of a maintenance monitoring and recording system. Moreover, the SR-71 Blackbird was used as a science camera platform for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory to record data on celestial objects in wavelengths blocked to ground-based astronomers by Earth's atmosphere. The aircraft also carried the Linear Aerospike SR-71 or LASAR experiment, a half-span scale model of a lifting body with eight thrust cells of a linear aerospike engine mounted on the back of the SR-71 aircraft during flight at high speeds and altitude. The test fixture allowed engineers to gather aerodynamic data under realistic flight conditions. Furthermore, the SR-71 served as a test bed in the development of a commercial satellite-based instant wireless personal communications network called Iridium. 
The system was developed by Motorola's Satellite Communications Division, and during developmental testing, the SR-71 acted as a surrogate satellite for transmitters and receivers on the ground. Additionally, the aircraft was used to study ways of reducing sonic boom over pressures produced by aircraft exceeding the speed of sound, and designers used data from the study to reduce the peak of sonic booms and minimize the startle effect on the ground. The SR-71 Blackbirds were among the most advanced and fascinating aircraft ever developed. They were designed to fly at speeds of Mach 3 and conduct reconnaissance missions during the Cold War. The resulting data from the Blackbirds helped improve theoretical prediction methods and computer models dealing with structural loads, materials, and heat distribution at up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. The aircraft was powered by two Pratt & Whitney J-58 axial flow turbojets with afterburners, each producing 32,500 pounds of thrust. During high-speed cruise conditions, the balance of total thrust was created by the unique engine inlet design and a movable conical spike at the front of each engine nacelle. The airframes were built almost entirely of titanium and other exotic alloys to withstand the heat generated by sustained high-speed flight. However, the SR-72 is a hypersonic spy plane believed to be the successor of the famous Blackbird concept. Lockheed Martin has been working on developing successors to the SR-71 since 1998, but has faced challenges in creating a high-speed aircraft. However, the company's Skunk Works division developed the rocket-launched hypersonic technology vehicle 2, HTV-2, part of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency's DARPA, Falcon Research and Development Project. The HTV-2 was designed to collect data on aerodynamics, aerothermal effects, guidance, navigation, and control. The vehicle completed its maiden flight in April 2010 and second flight in August 2011, reaching a maximum speed of Mach 20, 13,000 miles per hour. The data gained from the HTV-2 has been used to develop a better design for the SR-72, a hypersonic strategic reconnaissance aircraft. Additionally, the SR-72 is expected to strike targets anywhere across a continent in less than an hour when equipped with hypersonic missiles, such as Lockheed Martin's high-speed strike weapon. The aircraft will be optionally provided to fight in combat operations, and the long-term hypersonic roadmap of the U.S. Air Force supports its development. The SR-72 unmanned aircraft will be powered by two engines, receiving thrust from the turbine engine until it reaches Mach 3 speed. The dual-mode ramjet will then deliver power for the flight at hypersonic speeds. To reduce drag, the aircraft will use a single inlet nozzle for the turbine engine and ramjet. Despite the limited information available about the SR-72, there there have been occasional sightings of mysterious planes believed to be the SR-72, not just in the United States and Australia, but also other countries. However, these claims are complex to confirm and the sightings might be of different aircraft types. It is important to note that the success of the SR-72 does not mean that the U.S. military will eliminate manned penetrating reconnaissance air systems, though. Aircraft such as the U-2 are still in use, and the development of advanced all-weather multi-spectral sensors will benefit both manned and unmanned systems. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.